Today I'm going to dissolve U.S. nickels in acid to extract pure nickel metal. Modern U.S. nickels are about 25% nickel metal by mass and are not attracted to magnets, even though pure nickel is. The other 75% of nickels are copper, and to separate the two I need to first dissolve nickels in aqua regia, which is a mixture of hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. Typically this is made by just mixing hydrochloric and nitric acids, but you can also make it by dissolving a nitrate salt like sodium nitrate in concentrated hydrochloric acid. Aqua regia has a distinctive yellow color, and you'll know you've made it when the solution turns yellow. This acid solution is boiled for several hours until no nickel metal is visible, at which point the solution will become very dark. This dark color is due to dissolved copper 1 chloride, and once I get to this point, I pour my solution off into a larger beaker and add a good deal of water. The addition of water will precipitate the insoluble copper 1 chloride as a white solid, and this will settle to the bottom over time. Now, if all I wanted to do was separate my copper and my nickel, at this point I could just add stoichiometric quantities of aluminum to solution to precipitate my copper, filter that off, and then add more aluminum to precipitate my nickel out of solution, and I'd be done. However, I think it would be fun to make some copper 2 chloride along with some copper iodide, so that's what I'm going to do now. To make my copper iodide, the first thing I do is pour my resulting filtrin out into another beaker. To this, I'm going to add some potassium iodide, which will immediately precipitate insoluble copper iodide. No nickel iodide will be precipitated, even though some is formed in solution, because nickel iodide is very soluble in water. Copper iodide will also settle to the bottom, like copper 1 chloride, but it takes a lot longer, and while that's going on, I'm going to make my copper 2 chloride. To make my copper 2 chloride, I start with the copper 1 chloride I filtered off earlier. To this I'm going to add 3% hydrogen peroxide, which is going to bubble and put off a lot of heat as it oxidizes the copper 1 to copper 2 chloride. Another product of this reaction is copper hydroxide, which I can clear away with some dilute hydrochloric acid. Once my solution clears up again, I notice that there are a lot of black specks floating around in it, and these are just pieces of dirt and debris that were stuck to the nickels before I dissolved them. This is pretty easy to clear away, and all I do is pass my resulting copper 2 chloride through another coffee filter. While this is going on, I check on my copper iodide solution, and I can see that all of the copper iodide has settled to the bottom. I can filter this off the same way I've done with the last couple samples, and once this is done, I'm going to transfer my filtrant to another beaker. This is all the work I felt like doing on this project today, so this is going to be the end of part one for TikTok. Follow to see me separate out the pure copper and nickel metals from solution in part two. Today I'm going to continue extracting nickel metal from nickel coins, and I start by adding sodium metabasulfite to my copper nickel solution. The metabasulfite is going to reduce a lot of the copper ions in solution and precipitate a lot of the copper iodide that wasn't precipitated out in the previous step. I would recommend watching part one before this video, as otherwise you're going to be kind of confused as to what's going on. In any case, I filter this off to collect my copper iodide and transfer the filtrant to a 1000 milliliter beaker. This solution is still highly acidic, and when I add some aluminum foil, it immediately begins to react and bubble away. What's happening here is a redox reaction between the aluminum metal and the copper ions in solution. Aluminum is a much stronger reducing agent than copper and will displace copper ions in solution, forming aluminum chloride. This will precipitate copper metal, which sinks to the bottom of the beaker. Eventually, I'll be left with a thick layer of copper at the bottom of the beaker, and this represents all of the remaining copper that was in the nickels. This solution is then filtered off, which will allow me to separate my copper, dry it, and store it. At this point, there's no copper ions left, and what you're looking at is a solution of nickel chloride and nickel iodide. Now to separate my nickel metal out, I'm going to do the exact same process with the aluminum reduction, but this time I'm going to apply some heat as the reaction is very slow on its own. 
Now, you'll notice here that the nickel particles that are being precipitated out of solution are attracted to a magnet, and this is because pure nickel metal is magnetic. This effect of attraction becomes more and more obvious the more and more nickel is precipitated out of solution. There's obviously no reason to do this, and I just think it's pretty cool to look at. Anyway, this reaction is allowed to go to completion, and to wash my nickel metal, I place a magnet at the bottom of the beaker while I do several water washes, which will keep all of my nickel metal in the beaker while washing away all of the impurities. I do three washings followed by a filtration step to get my nickel as clean as possible, and when that's done, I put it all into a beaker and add some concentrated hydrochloric acid. Interestingly enough, nickel metal will only react with dilute hydrochloric acid, so this concentrated stuff will get rid of all of my aluminum and leave the nickel behind. This is then rinsed one final time before I separate off and dry my nickel, and at this point I'm completely done. Now, I don't have a percent yield for this process. Part of that reason is because I lost a lot of copper, making copper chloride and copper iodide in part one. However, the biggest reason I didn't bother with a percent yield is that I mostly did this as a proof of concept, as I did a lot of reading online and I couldn't really find any concrete sources regarding a process for the separation of copper and nickel from a solution, so I was curious to see if this was something I could do on my own. And overall, I'll say I'm happy with how this turned out. Uh, this was a very fun and engaging project, but obviously this is not an economic process by any means. If you need nickel metal, you're much better off just buying it online, especially if you need it in any sort of bulk quantity. Anyway, that's all I have for this today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this process. Check out part one if you haven't yet, and give me a follow if you'd like to see more chemistry content.